Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 9, Passwords and Hash Functions. In this lecture, we're going to talk about passwords, and we'll begin talking about how hash functions help to keep passwords secure. We'll start with a short story. Passwords are nothing new. For example, there's a story in the Bible that's over 2,000 years old where two groups of people are at war, the Gileadites and the Ephraimites. According to the story, during the war, the Gileadites captured an important river crossing on the Jordan River. They didn't want their enemies, the Ephraimites, to have free passage across the river, but they also couldn't tell who was and was not an enemy just by looking at them. Every once in a while, an Ephraimite would pretend to be a Gileadite and try to use the river crossing. But there were Gileadite guards who stayed at the river crossing and asked everybody who wanted to cross to pronounce the Hebrew word shibboleth. It turned out that the Ephraimites had grown up pronouncing that word differently. So instead of saying shibboleth, they would say sibboleth. When that happened, the Gileadite guard would execute the Ephraimite. So passwords are nothing new, but they're probably more common today than they ever have been before in the past. Think about it. How many password protected accounts and devices do you have? Pause the video for a moment and try to count them up. Unpause it whenever you're ready. Did you count them? Good. How many password protected accounts and devices do you have? I wouldn't be surprised at all if you had 20 or more. And in all likelihood, there are probably a few more that you forgot about while you were counting. That's a lot of passwords to remember. Ideally, these passwords keep your information secure. Computers can't keep your information secure unless they can limit access to particular people. But they can't check your photo ID, or scan your retina, or read your DNA. So passwords are the preferred means of proving that you are who you say you are. And really, passwords are much simpler and more convenient than trying to use photo IDs or retina scans or DNA evidence to prove your identity. Of course, for a password to be useful, both you and the service that you're logging into have to have a copy of it. Let's say you want to log into an online banking account. When you log into your online account, you normally submit a username and password. The bank will check your username and passwords against a list of usernames and passwords in one of its servers. If the username and password that you have submitted matches the one stored on the server, then they let you in. As you can imagine, those servers full of password files are tempting targets for cyber criminals. Imagine just one hack that could provide access to thousands of bank accounts or millions of email accounts. To help keep passwords secure, Companies like your bank use a special mathematical function called a hash function to encrypt passwords before storing them on their servers. A hash function converts a string of letters, numbers, and symbols into a completely different string called a hash value. As you can see from this illustration, a hash value looks nothing like the original password. It uses completely different symbols and it converts passwords of all lengths into one standard length, so that the length of the hash value can't be used to guess the length of the original password. Even similar looking passwords will result in completely different looking hash values. In this example, we just added the number one to the end of Alice's password, but the resulting hash value is completely different. Even if a hacker breaks into the password files at your bank and steals the hashed passwords, and even if they know the mathematical formula for the hash function, hash values are of little use to them because the hacker can't translate the hash values back into the passwords. The hash function only works one way. It can only scramble the passwords, not descramble them. So hash functions are, for all practical purposes, irreversible even for people who understand how the function works. The person who originally wrote the hash function would be just as unable to reverse it as any hacker would be. That might seem a little counterintuitive at first. How can a mathematical function only go one way? To show you how a function could be irreversible, I'm going to refer to some mathematical terms. If you have a little trouble following along, don't sweat it. You won't be quizzed on the math parts of this lecture, at least not by me. 
I'm just including some math because I think many of you will find it interesting and also because I think a mathematical illustration can help to make sense of the counterintuitive idea that a hash function could be totally irreversible. First, let's consider two prime numbers. You're going to time yourself as you multiply them together. For this example, let's use 13 and 41. In a moment, I'd like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to check how long it takes you to multiply these two numbers together. Ideally, you should use pencil and paper for this exercise, but you can use a calculator if you want to. Time yourself to see how long it takes to finish the problem. After you find the solution, unpause the video and continue on. Are you ready to pause? Good. Pause it now. Are you finished? About how long did it take to multiply the numbers together? Make sure you write that time down. Now the answer that you should have gotten is 533. I suspect that it didn't take you very long to find that answer, especially if you were using a calculator. Now let's do a similar problem, but let's do it in reverse. This time, let's consider the number 3,127. 3,127 is the product of two prime numbers, just like how 533 is the product of 13 and 41. Can you figure out which two prime numbers multiplied together produce 3,127? I'll even give you another hint. Both prime numbers are two digits long. Okay, got that? Pause the video now and try to calculate which two prime numbers multiplied together equal 3,127. If you get stuck, just unpause the video and move on. Don't worry about it. Ready? Good. Pause the video now. Did you figure it out? Don't feel bad if you didn't. This was supposed to be a difficult problem. The numbers you were looking for were 53 and 59. What this illustration shows is that some mathematical functions are much easier to figure out forwards than they are backwards. It's much easier to multiply two prime numbers together than to find the prime factors of a large number. Even computers struggle to find prime factors when the numbers involved are big enough. Hash functions are the same way. It's relatively easy to turn a password into a hash, but there's no known way to reverse a hash function. Okay, that's all for now on passwords and hash functions. As we've just seen, your passwords are usually pretty safe when they're kept on servers. That's because the people who put passwords onto servers use hash functions to scramble them. But cybercriminals will also use a variety of other tactics to steal your usernames and your passwords. In the next video, we will discuss several of those tricks and develop some strategies for avoiding them.